The most exciting thing today is to start an online business and to work from home. But I'll tell you there are a lot of challenges that come with it and it is not as easy as it is seen outside. In this video, I want to, be, I want to cut the fluff and just tell you straight away what are the 10 tips that you need to incorporate into yourself uh, if you want to be a successful digital entrepreneur. I've built a full-fledged digital marketing agency for seven to eight years, sold that company, and then I moved from a product business, a services business to a product-based business. And right now, with just a four to five member team, we've been able to build a multi-million dollar business with over 20,000 paid community members in my tribe right now. And I've been able to do that because of applying a few principles that lot, not many people see through. And the reason I'm recording this video is I want you to cut short your learning curve so that next time you watch any kind of marketing message that portrays digital marketing or digital business building to be easy. It is not so easy. Uh, and I want you to keep in mind and be aware of these 10 points and the 10 tips I'm going to share with you right now. Okay, so take a lot of notes and let's get straight in. Give it up for Siddharth Ratshaker! Hi, that's Siddharth Rajcheck here. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. And if you're watching this on Facebook or YouTube or wherever, just hit that like button below so that you get more of these videos, okay? So the first tip that I would like to share with you is you got to focus on building a solid product, okay? Uh, this is the one single factor that a lot of people miss out where they, they get too uh, premature in their business in terms of marketing. They go and start to market before they build a solid product. And for me, in my first three, four months, I was not marketing so heavily on Instagram or Facebook or anything else. I was just running ads to my webinars, but I was continuously building and improving my product based on the feedback that I was getting from my initial customers. So having your year on the ground and building a solid product is like the best thing that you can ever do. And how do you build a solid product is by learning from others who have done it really well. Okay, look into the market. It's very evident that you'll be able to see that there are a few people who are doing extremely well in your industry or your space. Identify, note down some patterns of what they're doing and, and, repl and model that, okay? Replicate that, replicate their success. Don't copy them, but replicate their success. So for me, building a solid product was, uh, it all has to do with doing a lot of research, understanding the pain points in the market, uh, defining who, who my target market is, understanding what the messaging should be like, and also uh, bringing forth proven ideas and concepts that can help them get results. So the effectiveness of a good product is its effect on the user, okay? In other words, if people are going through your product and service and if they are able to get results, that is the litmus test, okay? Whether your product is gonna work or not. The second tip I wanna share with you is that you gotta to listen to your market and I've said this before. Now, how do you listen? Number one is you can go to places like Quora and you can search for uh, all the kind of questions that people are asking pertaining to your topic and then you'll get some insights. You can go and search on Google. I have a, a, a bunch of tools that I use to go and do research on YouTube also to find out what people are actually searching for and, and what are the solutions that are already there in the market. And then once I you know, have all of that, then I assimilate all of it, I digest that and then I come, up, come across the plans. Like for example, even this video, I started to record this because I know a lot of people, they are wanting to get into digital entrepreneurship, but they're making a lot of mistakes and they do not know what to keep in mind and what should be the tips they need to keep in mind. And that's why I'm recording this video. So when the more you listen to your market, the better you'll be able to get perspectives on how to solve their problems. It's not about how much you know, it's not about how great you are, it's not about how many years of experience you have, it's not about how many awards you won, okay? It all comes down to what the market needs and how efficiently can you solve their problem, okay? The third tip I wanna share with you is if you wanna be a, a successful digital entrepreneur, build to scale, okay? Uh, there's, it's, this is a topic of its own, okay? And I think there's a book also around this. But in my initial business, I was not able to build it in such a way that I was able to scale it. Like today, I'm able to scale to 20,000 paid customers and everybody is happy. And I can even take this to a million, two million, five million, 10 million customers also without really getting uh, my freedom affected, okay? So how do you build to scale is you got to first analyze and see what kind of a product you want to deliver. Like suppose you're selling your time that is not scalable, okay? And suppose you're selling something that requires more human components in the system that is not scalable. And suppose you are, you only need to uh, put money into ads to grow the business, that is also not scalable because you're going to hit a threshold. So what do you, what do you mean by scalable then? The way like I define it is the reason I call my business model the freedom business model is number one is I decided to build digital products rather than selling services. 
because once you start selling a service you're selling your time and that involves more, more number of people so when it comes to products also there are different kinds of products you can sell a digital course you can sell a you know a digital membership in my case i'm selling it as a membership so as a part of the membership they get access to a bunch of things that where some elements involve my time but but the scalability is there even if like 2000 people come into my system right now today at this very moment i'm not going to get burnt out okay the system can handle it and they just get into the whole loop so look at all of these factors to see if you are able to scale and when you build to scale that's what makes it really hot you know as a business model the fourth tip I want to share with you is if you want to be successful as a digital entrepreneur, you've got to define your marketing strategy in terms of which platforms you want to use to reach out to your market. Do you want to focus on YouTube or do you want to get on LinkedIn? Do you want to like spend more time on Twitter and interact with influencers? Or do you want to play the game of Instagram where you need to be more visual and appealing and you know shoot reels and stuff like that? So your marketing strategy has a lot to do with who's your target market, where do they hang out, and what kind of an attention span do they have on that specific platform? And by the way, you don't have to be on all the platforms. You just pick like your one or two platforms where your, your target market is most active and uh, get active over there. Okay, Because these two, three small things will save you a lot of uh, time and energy. See, it's all about managing your energy, right? In a business like this, when I mean, you're launching a business, if you're putting your energy in multiple places, it gets scattered and you can't really get the result. So if you're starting off, my suggestion to you here is to pick one or two platforms where your audience is the most active and develop a strategy around that. Now, what should be the strategy like? The strategy should be more like, uh, what pain points do they have? Uh, to address those pain points, how many content pieces should I create? And what should be the angles of the content pieces? And then where should I take them from that content piece, okay? So if you're just posting a video or posting something out there and there is no interlinking between uh, you know what you're teaching and where you want them, to, what you want them to do next. Then there's going to be a problem. No, the it won't. The dots won't connect. Like after this video, at the end of this video, I'm going to be inviting you to my next webinar. And by you going to that webinar, you have an opportunity to to become a paid member in my community. If you're not yet a member, so okay. Now, if you're already a part of my community, you're anyway consuming this information on YouTube and other places. So there has to be a clear marketing strategy and for me the marketing strategy has been predominantly around Facebook I have a Facebook group I have a YouTube channel and I also have like a uh, I've got a podcast uh, that gets you know hundreds of downloads every single day where I like to record more long form content like this rather than short form videos okay the fifth tip that I would like to share with you is uh, you've got to perfect your sales process now sales process there are multiple aspects to it number one is who are you attracting into your funnel in terms of what kind of lead generation process do you have in my case is webinars so that's running 24 by 7 that generates sales for me 24 by 7 because again it's a very scalable model my physical time is not required initially i should do live webinars now it's moved into automated webinars and uh, people directly buy when they go through that and it's profitable on its own on the front end itself so but for me to come to a part where i'm able to perfect the sales process it required a lot of experiments that i had to do in the beginning so the first part is understanding who's your target market two is defining what your lead magnet is going to be Third is what's that sales process going to be? In some, like in my case, from day one, it's been a webinar sales process. I like to do one too many selling. Okay, so there's more scalability, more leverage over there. Okay, but those of you are starting off right now, you can start with a one to one sales process. Maybe you want to just sell one to one if it's a service, or if you're selling something of a higher ticket or a higher value. If you're selling a low ticket, then you can do one to many. Okay, anything under ten thousand rupees, you don't have to do one to one for that. So in that case. Uh, you have to go through your own experiments and perfect the sales process. And the sales process is not just about what you say at the selling part, it's about the pre-framing also. Like what do you do to pre-frame the audience so that they get excited to go and buy afterwards? Like if you look at Apple, for example, they're a classic example. They do the WWDC events and we have people from all over the world who come in for those events. They showcase their latest iPhone or the latest MacBook Pro or the latest Apple product. And then they launch, they say this date, this is gonna be uh, you know, launched. And on that day, they start shipping, okay? So they have a very solid sales process that at least two or three times in a year they are uh, they are pitching their next product and that's why it's one of the richest companies in the world okay so like this i have a sales process that is a daily sales process a monthly sales process um, a quarterly sales process to you know spike up revenues like we have different deals we have like black friday deal we have like an end of the year deal we have like on different festivals you know you can have different kinds of offers and deals that's part of the sales process so you need to really go down and put that together and if you're not a part of my community once you come inside my tribe you'll understand that this is these are the elements that i actually teach on a much more deeper level as you are going to the community okay Number six is you delegate, automate, and outsource. Okay, so I tell all of my community members is get hands-on first before you can get hands-off, okay? So 
once you understand the technology and tools and how it really works then you'll be able to delegate some of the tasks that are not in your highest uh, area of uh, values okay you can automate a lot of stuff like I, like I automate my reporting i automate my lead generation and by the way if you're not my diamond member my automation mastery course actually cover how i exactly automate my business in a very simple way and then outsource like for me video editing uh, website building funnel building i know how to do it myself but now i want more time so i have teams that actually does it for me okay and it's all paper project basis so even for me the way that i've structured my team is i don't have many people on my payroll i have a lot of project based freelancers who work for me have a lean and efficient team that works and uh, all my my entire workforce is virtual I, and i work from home i just have a co-working space registered office but my this is my home office so even when you keep your structure lean and mean like that uh, lean and efficient it becomes so much more easier to scale so the sixth tip i want to give you is delegate automate and outsource once you have got hands on first then you can get hands off the seventh tip that i would like to share with you is uh, closely track your business okay now what all can you track in your business number one is you can track the number of uh, you know traffic that's coming to your website you can track the number of leads that are in your system you can track how many sales are happening you can track what is the upsell process and how many people are upgrading to the your higher level products or higher level services and stuff like that so this is very basic level tracking and in my book you can coach if you're not picked up my book you can coach buy it i share at least 18 important metrics that a digital business has to track if they have to be successful in a in a digital business okay at least 18 metrics are that that you got to track but uh, this is very important and then of course there's link tracking and you want to track clicks and from which places they're coming and who are the who are the buyers and you know you can go very in depth in this and social media you can track what's the reach what's the engagement what's the the you know uh, how many people are actually commenting below your posts every single month and when you go facebook live like how many people reach you can see on youtube what's the average view duration what is the retention rate on your videos there are a lot of metrics you can track and in my automation mastery course uh, i have given my business dashboard template where you can automate this entire thing okay so i have automated all my reporting dashboards where anyone buys my product everything gets tagged and it comes in straight into my system that i'm able to track on a much 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 closer basis on a real time basis okay the eighth tip that i would like to share with you is uh, get good at videos you know if you want to grow in a digital business, you got to get good at video marketing. Okay, And like what I'm doing right now is not marketing. I'm educating all of you. I'm giving you some ideas. And I'm able to just try that free flowing. And by the way, I was an introvert before and I'm still an introvert. But I've gained the skill of doing videos after doing many, many hundreds of videos. So in the beginning, you may not be so confident. But the more and more you do it, you will start to see yourself get better. And this one aspect of video is a very, very powerful medium for you to reach out to hundreds and thousands of people while you're sleeping you can add value to people and get them into your system okay so get good at doing videos and start to do at least a few videos every single week number nine i want to share is build communities this is something a lot, lot of people don't uh, you know really take this seriously they just want to sell their products but i believe that the my relationship with my customers has to begin at the point of sale it cannot end at the point of sale so in my case uh, even though i'm selling memberships i'm bringing people and building tribes and communities and when you're able to keep communities together that's what's going to help you scale better and and let that flywheel kick in okay you go and do a research on youtube and search for digital coach flywheel i have a video where i've analyzed how amazon as a company has uh, you know, become what it is today because of the concept of the flywheel okay so for me the community building process it's a very flywheel uh, methodology where more and more people who come in they get nurtured they get the customer experience they get 10x value and they start to tell others about it you know the word of mouth really spreads so when the word of mouth spreads then that automatically attracts more customers to come in and where that tipping point is is when you have a large amount of people like right now 20,000 plus people and many of them are recommending others to them so every every uh, month I'm adding hundreds of new customers without really having to you know search or establish my credibility and and showcase uh, you know my credibility from the scratch because a lot of people are already talking about this so that's why building communities is a much better approach than just trying to get customers uh, in a hunting format we just hunt 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 here this is more like farming you know we are nurturing 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 every single day and uh, that's the best way to build a digital business and the 10th tip i want to share with you is uh, if you want to be a successful a digital entrepreneur you got to work on your inner game sometimes you may get lost in the whole world of tools and technology and tactics and everything else but you know the deeper you work on yourself the wider your impact will actually be and your digital business will grow to the extent that you do 
Now, as much as I talk about tools and tactics, I love to spend a lot more time on understanding human behavior, understanding the spiritual side of things, understanding like what are the gaps in me that I need to fill so that I can, uh, you know, so that I can inspire others not to do the same. Okay. Or in other words, your business will grow to the extent that you do. Your customers will get results to the extent that you invest in your own growth and your learning. Okay. So I'm continuously learning new things and I'm continuously implementing and I'm, uh, I make mistakes and I'm open to share that with my audience and I'm also continuously just figuring things out as I'm going through this journey and as I'm going through that I'm sharing it with others and they're able to see the benefit. So the more you work on your inner game, uh, the better it's going to be for your students and for your customers and stuff like that. Okay. So these are the 10 tips that I would like to share with you and uh, I hope you found this useful because to become a digital entrepreneur is not it's not an easy thing there is a journey to it there is a process to it and there is a you got to put in a lot of uh, time energy and your money also in some cases to really make this happen and especially if you're somebody who's in a job or maybe you're just looking and considering starting a business my recommendation to you here is to attend my next webinar by going to sids.co slash live okay uh, this is a session where i will teach you exactly how to launch a knowledge business with all the principles that has worked for me it's a two hour session and at the end of it you can actually be a part of my community and you can join over 20,000 people who are building their own digital business from the comfort of their homes without any office with a very small team to start with and, and later on you can scale to a completely virtual team okay so when i started i did not have any employees also no office no employees and i was doing a multi crore business every single year so what I want all of you to do is if you're watching this, uh, just uh, type in the comments below, whether it's on Facebook or YouTube. Uh, what was your biggest uh, learning from this? What was your biggest takeaway? I would like to read that and reply back to you. And uh, what else would you like to know when it comes to a digital business? Okay, if there's something that I forgot to cover in this, please let me know below so that in my future videos, I can address that and I can give you more value. So that being said, thank you so much. Cheers, God bless and wish you all the best on launching your digital business. You know, there's a huge market out there. It's a booming industry. You just need to get the skills to make it happen. All the best. Catch you in the next video.